Hey, welcome to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. Tonight, we're gonna take you from Schofield Reservoir over to Strawberry Reservoir, and we're gonna introduce you to an angling organization that puts more into their nets than any other anglers I've ever met. And we're not talking fish. We'll explain a little later. Let's go get on the water and introduce you to a couple of the guys. Uh, I grabbed a mix of some of my pike flies and also some of my larger trout flies. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll start with some of these uh, drop jaw flies right here. Hoping that'll mimic, a, I think it's called a baby whitey, but it looks like a baby chub to me, so yeah. I'm gonna throw that in and see how it goes. Meet Jared Winkler and Brad Greeno, both avid fly fishermen. Jared is the founder of Brighton Anglers, and Brad is the co-founder of Fish for Garbage. So we were fishing the lower Provo a lot at the time. Um, we'd always pack out, just fill our nets full of garbage as we left. The idea for Fishing for Garbage formed on fishing trips on the Provo River. Instead of bickering about it, these guys decided to do something about it. So they got a bunch of their friends together and organized Fish for Garbage. This nonprofit organization organizes garbage cleanups on rivers and lakes. We first met Fish for Garbage in 2015 at their first cleanup on the Lower Provo River. After that first cleanup, I contacted Jared. We, you know, started marketing it a little bit better, had kind of the same idea of where we wanted to go with this thing. And here we are five years later, and, you know, we've got four events in one year. I mean, judging off our last Provo cleanup was two and a half tons, 5,000 pounds of garbage. Fish for Garbage has grown out of the mindset to protect our rivers, restore damaged waterways, and provide a legacy of clean water for the next generation. The value is, is really we're just getting a bunch of people, one, showing them that we can make a difference in just a couple hours of work. We can fill some dumpsters full of trash. And two, I mean, we clean up the rivers, and three, Leading up to that, we sit and talk about uh, how much effort we're going to put into it. And then after the event, we talk about how much we cleaned up and just trying to w raise awareness about uh, you know, the trash along the shores, along the riverbanks. And that, you know, all it takes is a little bit of effort each time you go fishing to pick something up and throw it away. Don't point a finger at somebody else. Just clean up, leave it, leave it better than you found it. There's been those principles in camping and things like that forever, but, you know, really in fishing, nobody shares that. So. We're here to help share that message. These events are more than just picking up garbage. They have food, entertainment. This very nice Umpwa fishing backpack. Prizes, and of course, they get out and fish. Yes. Fish on, huh? Uh, there you go, Brad. Nah, it's probably cut. The great thing is, is our job is only getting easier by people wanting to volunteer, and those people are skilled professionals, you know, like musicians, volunteering, live entertainment, uh, you know, marketers, graphic artists, people saying, hey, how can I help? I want to do an event. Or, and now it's growing to where we're trying to pick and choose what we can and can't handle, and hopefully our future is, you know, giving people a format of like, here, this is what you got to do, put on your own cleanup, and we'll help you promote it, we'll help get people to show up. There we go. Cut them out of your pocket, Brad. Another little cutty. I'll take them all day. It affects the environment. When we go out there, we don't want to be fishing around an empty 12-pack of beers. And we, I mean, we want to go and be in pristine land and be in a nice environment. I mean, I, it just it boggles my mind that people <laughs> you just want to throw your crap out in such a beautiful place, and, the, and it's not even the Provo. You see it everywhere. Oh, it's a nicer cut right there. <laughs> there we go, first fish of the day. Hey. Woo Cutthroat, I think. These guys are going after trout. We know there's muskie in here. I want to see one, so I thought I'd throw something to target musky and I got a nice cutthroat. Nice fish though. Good to see Schofield starting to produce some nice fish. You know I haven't fished Schofield Reservoir in years and I'm not alone. Between 2005 and 2016 angling use at Schofield Reservoir 
declined by nearly 70%. Just a nice cutthroat. Anglers have been disappointed with the quality of fish. The problem? This is a chub club, exclusive members only here. Too many chub. Get over here. So to combat the chub problem, the DWR instituted a new predator-heavy management strategy. Part of that strategy includes the toothy tiger muskie. All right, I really messed up here. I just got back from Lake Powell and I left my net at home because I didn't take it to Powell, didn't think I'd need it. And now I just took it up with a muskie. I'm going to need their help. Oh yeah, they're fighting fish. This isn't a very big fish, but hey, it's my first one from Schofield. There he is. I'm going to need your net. Yeah, he's a nice looking fish. Oh, you're walking the dog right to walking us. Walking the dog. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Awesome. You want to take him out and hold, show him up? Hopefully he eats lots of chub. Go. Cool. Thanks, Brad. Be back. Thanks for the net job. Look at him. He's awesome. That is pretty cool. And uh, they're, they're only going to, yeah, they're healthy. They're only going to get bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jared. There we go. Is just killing it. Oh yeah. With his little black leech. Secret sauce for me today. Yeah, so what I'm running is shooting this guy, it looks like a little cutthroat. And then uh, I'm cheating, but I have a trailer on here with a little leech. And that's where I've been catching all the trout and the chubs with in hopes of uh, a muskie eating my, my, meat, my baby cut there. As you can see, these guys are passionate about fishing and keeping a clean environment. Oh yeah. They concentrate mostly on rivers, but recently have focused in on lakes and they encourage everyone to follow their lead. This guy hit my musky fly. Well, there's a lot of fly fishermen who actually just walk the banks and you, that's when you see the trash. When you're on a boat floating around, you don't really see it. But when you start walking the banks and you know fishing with your family from the shore, you see cans, you see debris, you see old fishing tackle, and especially those places that are easily accessible from the road, you start seeing road debris like tires and pallets and plastic bottles, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See, I'm having fun now. Watching Adam catch all the fish was, was cool, but now I'm having fun. best way to find us is, you know, all the social media, Fish for Garbage or fishforgarbage.org. Oh, you guys have a website. I didn't know yep. that. You can go to the website, look us up, uh, find out how to get involved in our next event. We have two more coming up later this summer, so we hope to see you at one of them at least. What's the next one? Our next one is August 10th at Green River, at mm -hmm. right below the A, B, and C section, so it should be a lot of fun. What a neat place. Yeah. Float the rivers and pick up trash as we go. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hey, I encourage you to get involved with Fish for Garbage or a great organization. It's great to see you guys grow like you have and uh, continue to do what you're doing. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it, Brad. Thanks for calling me. You bet. All right. Hey, I'm Adam Eagle, KSL Outdoors, reminding you out with your family, your friends. Make some memories, and while you're doing it, pick up some trash while you're outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.